Hello friends, welcome back. In the previous session, I discussed clearly what exactly is Harmony OS and why it is famous and why it is going to be famous, what are the technical features of it which is really different from the existing operating systems, all those things I discussed and today we are going to see the technical architecture of the Harmony OS. Can we take a close look? It's going to be interesting. Well, we have got four layers to it, kernel layer, system service layer, framework layer and application layer. There are four layers. Well, it's clearly structured and layered. It starts with the kernel layer and ends with application layer and each of them has got a real specific function which I'm going to talk about. First one is the kernel layer and it has got two parts to it. The first one is kernel subsystem and the second one is driver subsystem. You can see that here. It is kernel subsystem and driver subsystem. Well, what is kernel subsystem? It has got a multi-kernel approach. What do you mean by that? Very simple. You can select appropriately which kernel do you want based on the device that you are having in hand. For an instance, you are going to have a wearable so it can be selecting the light OS. You are going to have an Android phone there you can go ahead with Linux kernel. Likewise, you can select based on your requirement what kernel do you want. Which kernel do you want can be selected. That's the first part. We have got something called as kernel abstraction layer, KAL people call it. This KAL actually shields the differences in the kernel implementations. What do you mean by that? It shields the differences in the kernel implementations. I got multiple kernel implementation inside and someone has to protect it. And most importantly, this KAL is going to provide the upper layer. The upper layer is getting connected through this. It is going to provide the upper layer with all the kernel capabilities, which is like the process management, the thread management, the memory management, the file system, network management, peripheral management, everything. So this guy is so very important. The kernel abstraction layer KAL is very, very important. That's it is the first part. Well, we come to the driver subsystem now. The name itself is very clear. It is going to help you completely in the driver development and management. This is the base for Open Harmony OS ecosystem. Remember, this is going to help you in terms of driver development and management. That's all. The first layer is all done. This is all done clearly. Well, what next? The next one is going to be system service layer. You can see that this is a very important layer. This provides services through the framework layer, understand the point, this layer provides services through the framework layer and through that only the Harmony OS is capable, is becoming capable to offer a vast range of services. So this guy is going to use this guy to provide you multiple services, right. There are some things that you need to learn through this and we are going to talk about the system service layer in a detailed manner. What is it? We are going to connect totally the system service layer as four parts. First one is the basic system capability system subset, uh, system set and basic software service subsystem set, enhanced software service subsystem set, hardware service subsystem set. We are going to talk about all these four but in a quicker way. Let's take the first one. Basic system capability subsystem set. What is it? This particular unit, this particular section is completely responsible for the distributed application to run, to schedule and to migrate across the devices. We have got multiple Harmony OS devices right since it is distributed. So these guys are responsible for doing it. And we have got something called as DSOF bus. This is very special and this is a communication base for interconnecting devices. We have got support for ARC. ARC is nothing but a compiler which is high power compiler which will be helping you in the direct translation of the code to machine language. Other than this, we have got a distributed scheduler, we have got distributed data management unit, we have got utils. All these are going to make this basic system capability subsystem really powerful. So this is very, very easy to understand. Please understand this helps you in getting your distributed application running to get itself scheduled and to migrate across devices. Well, what is the next one? The next one is basic software service system set, subsystem set. What is it? Very simple. We have got support clearly for telephony, multimedia, design for excellence. We call it design for X, which is called a DFX 
all these are supported very clearly you can see that telephony multimedia dfx it's supported and we have got something called as msdp and dv msdp is important to be known it is nothing but mobile sensing development platform it integrates the sensing sources of all the involved devices to accurately sense what exactly is the user state the motion status the gestures the health status and this will enable you to understand the situation better and it really brings smartness really in in it, it can make smartness happen that's that's exactly it is and msdp is mobile sensing development platform device virtualization is another thing that's also offered through basic software service subsystem set so remember that now what is the next one to be seen nns software service subsystem set it has got clear support uh, it it provides in fact the support for software services for the devices it provides software services for the devices which include smart tv wearable iot iot devices everything everything comes in into picture and this gets the software service support well the hardware service subsystem set we have got software support given what next we need to definitely give the hardware support so this particular layer is going to provide you this particular subsystem is going to provide you the details which include location biometric recognition and this can be used for uh, wearable dedicated hardware or iot dedicated hardware the support is clearly provided for all those right now comes the next one framework layer we have seen the kernel layer we have seen the system service layer and we are now going to see the framework layer this layer provides support to you I, I repeat it. This layer provides support to you to develop applications in the way you want. In the sense, multiple languages and platforms like the Java, C, C++, JavaScript, multiple platforms are supported. Multiple languages are supported, and that support comes through this, right? So you've got support for multi-language APIs for hardware as well as software services, and that's what is provided by this framework layer. And finally, we have the application layer coming into picture. so what is it this layer will help you in getting system applications as well as third party applications utilized very clearly you can see that i got system application i got third party application right there are two terms that you need to understand one is pa another one is fa pa is particle abilities fa is feature abilities particle ability supports the background task processing and data access feature abilities will provide you ui for user interaction that's all let's make it simple feature ability will provide ui particle ability helps you in the background and task processing fa at times will retrieve information from pa that will also happen overall that's it we have clearly discussed the architecture in terms of layered approach and i explained you each of the services very clearly i believe in case you have any questions you can post it across in the chat box i'll be very happy to answer if you like the channel and the content kindly subscribe thank you